And I'm going to take it one step further with, to a contradicting subject, which is aromatizer inhibitors. A lot of people that are on testosterone replacement therapy, for instance, they're going to be given aromatics. I think of Remedex, in my opinion, I don't want to say it's a trash drug, but in my opinion, it's a trash drug because of the issue on the, with the lipid profiles that you get from it. And they just keep throwing a Remedex at you. And like, they don't even talk about Novadex or Romacin. And I think it has to do with how much money is involved potentially with that drug. I don't know hundred percent, but I would assume that's part of it. Or maybe it's just easier to throw a longer ester drug at someone than actually. Yeah, I, think, I think part of it has to do with a little bit of like ignorance or, or just not like there's a lot of people who get prescribed things that you guys probably both have seen, and you're like, I'm not sure what this doctor is doing. Maybe they have information that I don't have, but you 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 see these like it's like the cookie cutter diet plan to get somebody shredded, right? It's like, hey, this is what you should do, and but instead of a cookie cutter diet plan for come from a coach or a fitness person, it's like a cookie cutter HRT yeah. program that's not, in my opinion, it's not necessarily super thought out for that individual based upon what they're experiencing and their blood work. And you're like, what do you do? A lot of times do do? doctors don't even know what they're prescribing. I, I saw a guy on Instagram today. He just started TRT. His doctor had him on a milligram of Rivadex, not per week, per day. And oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So I, so I wrote to him. I was like, bro, you're on the same protocol as women with breast cancer that are trying to crush their fucking estrogen levels. And he's like, I only did it for four days, and now I just messaged you. And I was like, he's like, I felt, I felt super sleepy, super lethargic. His joints are hurting. He said his skin is even dry. That's in like four days. And I'm like, dude, you crush your estrogen. And this is from a doctor. But you know what they say? I mean, everyone finishes at the bottom of their class. So there's always someone. So, so, I just asked, what do you, so what, what do you do for people with liver issues? Because that one, of, the first thing that the first thing that I do or have anybody do is hydration. But, but I'm curious to learn what what your thoughts are. Like, what would what? Hey, my liver enzymes are fucked up. You got to die. You got to figure out the problem, like that's causing that, right? But then also you got to fix the liver. Yeah. So um, it's not always directly liver related, right? So it could be digestion related where you're just not breaking stuff down. It's putting extra pressure on the liver, whatever it may be. Um, it could be potentially that you have some type of cirrhosis or fatty liver. Doctors love th throwing out the terminology fatty liver. So like if I see liver enzymes off, I was like, the doctor's going to tell you a fatty liver like 90% of the time. Um, and it's not technically fat. There, it's on paperwork, it's fatty liver, but it's not. Um, it just has to do with bile ducts. Like the bile is having issues getting in there to break stuff down. Um, so if you want to talk about artificial liver bile, Tudka, Tudka is really underrated. Um, there are, I mean, you have DIM, you have, um, I'm going to butcher this one. It's calcium deglycerate, I think. Deglutarate. De yeah, deglutarate. Um, and what essentially that does is it helps to actually excrete out that extra estrogen. So you're basically talking about pathwaying the estrogen to excrete it out of the body, whether you want good estrogen, DIM helps with, um, and then the uh, calcium deglutarate um, helps to get it out of, and that's 16O, and then uh, 2OH is the DIM, uh, which is good estrogen pathways. So you're talking about pathwaying the estrogen because estrogen is phenomenal, first of all, for us, for muscle growth, for libido, but you don't want to have it super high because then what you end up seeing is fat around the waistline area. If you get a male that has fat around the waistline area and you just can't get rid of it, yeah, ex exactly. That's probably the little Caesars. And, uh, <laughs> so, so, but if you have issues with that, then it may potentially be like, all right, let's run some lab work. And then if their estrogen levels come back like close to 100, right? Well, and they're not taking any AIs or any Nolvidex or any Aromacin. Maybe you t do something harder like a Remedex or an Aromacin for like two to three days just to knock it really fast. And then you switch over to something more mild like a Nolvidex. Or you just – because when it's that high, you really want to knock it and get it down. Once it's when the end level, then you do natural remedies and try to keep it in check. And the doctors don't know the natural realm. They don't have the time to learn it. They have nothing to do with – I don't think that they don't care about it. They just don't learn it in school, and they don't have the time to learn it. I mean, they're they don't get paid for either. Yeah. yeah, they're getting patients in and out the door. Functional doctors, on the other hand, they'll throw a million multivitamins at you, and they'll charge you a thousand dollars and let you walk out the door. They made more than the actual doctor did. <laughs> I literally have a video that's in Premiere Pro that I'm editing later tonight on our AI is overprescribed, and I think it's one hundred percent. I mean, it's just. I think a lot of it with a lot of doctors and even TRT clinics is that 
guys think that when they get on TRT, it's like this God tier feeling. They're never supposed to feel tired. They're always supposed to be able to get it up. Morning wood is con- consistent seven days a week. And, you know, brain fog, totally clear, anxiety gone. They just feel like gods. But when they start taking TRT and they're, you know, some of those, or it's just not what they expected, I think a lot of them are like, well, my estrogen five points above the reference range. And then they start fucking around with the Rimidex, you know, and then they, they're chasing this, this, um, this, you know, level that cannot be achieved. It's not real. And they use a, a estrogen to say, well, that's why I feel tired. That's why I couldn't get it up. That's why I'm not getting gains in the gym. And I think TRT clinics, they prescribe it just so that they, a lot of them, they don't have to deal with estrogen side effects, you know? A lot of them, yeah, but you, that's you know, my thought on it. One, one thing that's super weird that I see, that's like the most common cookie cutter way to prescribe an anti-aromatizer, and it's almost 100% chance that you get it. I've seen one, I've seen testosterone mixed with a Remedex. So every single time that you do your TRT, it, you do a shot of a Remedex with it, or they give you one pill. So every time you do a shot of it, you take a Remedex with it, but yet the half-life doesn't even add up to making it like normal. Like it doesn't like theoretically in half-life principle, it just doesn't make sense. Um, so that's one thing that I think is like really weird that they do. And it's like, whoever theorized that, I mean, I get it in theory. You're, I guess you want the body to go through its natural cycles. That's why in TRT world, it's actually more stable to do seven, every seven days um, versus a natural body cycle is actually every 14 days because our body naturally loves cycles. It's kind of like growth hormone, for instance, right? I- IGF-1 levels, you'll see it peaking and valleying. Every hormone in the body peaks and valleys. And when we go to this super physiological controlling realm, it's really against what our body wants. So maybe that's a theory behind doing the Arimidex once a week kind of thing. But I think find it kind of weird because I- <laughs> What are you going to do? Try to lower the arimidin, like lower the estrogen, but then the estrogen starts to raise up with the testosterone, and as the testosterone is coming down, it's it's a weird um, half life principle that kind of happens. There. So I I uh, actually do a lot of my like the compounds I take, but but completely different than how uh, where the half life is. I think I'll, in all honesty, people put more emphasis on the half life than is potentially necessary because I've still been able to go through without paying. Like you, you're aware of it. You understand it. You, you're like, okay, well I did that. I tested that. Well, let me try it without considering that piece of it. And I'm still able to make progress. But then again, like we kind of do that, like, right. We kind of do this thing a little bit more than maybe the average Joe person would do this. <laughs> but I, just, I thought that was interesting. You had mentioned, right. We're all kind of like have our own, uh, hormone cycles throughout the body uh, on a very macro level i'd love to hear what you guys think i've seen over the last 10 years a shift from the medical community and it's just in the beginning infancy stages where they have people that they try to bring up to average where over the last 10 years we've seen a shift at least i have um where they're trying to people are trying to be way more above average and and there's emphasis on that where there was never a discussion about that 10 years ago 